Hi everyone, welcome back. In the last video, we watched the reviewer go through the four steps of doing a peer review in OJS. This time, we're going to see what Tim, our section editor, needs to do once the reviews are in. Let's take a look at Tim's dashboard. Remember, we just go up to the top corner and select Dashboard, and there's the submission we're working with, including the notification that reviews are in. We can click on it, and notice that we're dropped right into the review stage. We can see the status, new reviews have been submitted, and there's the review file. And looking down, we can see Serena's review recommendation, which was revisions required. We see others have come in too. Adela Gallego recommends resubmitting elsewhere. And another reviewer, Paul Hudson, has been sent a review, but we still haven't heard back from him. So there are a few things we can do from here. Let's take a look at Serena's review by clicking Read Review. We can see the date when she completed it. We can see her recommendation. We can see the text that she wrote for both the author and the editor. You typically see something a little more substantial here. And we can see if she added any text just for the editor, which might vary a bit from what she wrote for both the author and editor to see. If she'd uploaded any files, such as a copy of the manuscript marked up with track changes turned on, it would appear here. And we can see that she recommended revisions required. So that all looks good, and we can cancel out of this window. Let's take a look at Adela's. We can read her review and see her recommendation. She hasn't uploaded any review files, and she recommends resubmit elsewhere. So it's really up to us, of course, to make the decision as to what to do with this submission. We could take Serena's advice and ask the author to make some revisions, or we could take Adela's advice and ask the author to resubmit elsewhere, or we could ignore both of those and just accept it as it is or decline it. It's up to us, as this ultimately is our responsibility. But let's also deal with Paul, because we're still waiting for him. I'm going to go to that little blue arrow, and we can see the review details, which lets us know that he was notified and we're still waiting for him. We could send him an email reminding him of the review request. We could edit the review request, when we could change the dates or the file to be reviewed. We could unassign him if we think he'll be unable to do it. And that pops up a pre-written email. And the history of the review request is here, and it's very brief because he's only been assigned and notified. So I think in this example I'm going to unassign him because we want to move forward on this submission. So now he's gone and we just have two reviewers. And I'm going to take Serena's advice and request revisions. So will these revisions requ require another round of review? No, let's just leave it. Do we want to send an email to the authors? Yes, we do. We can see that there's a very brief email already written for us, and we can expand on that if we want to. Another thing we can do that's very important is to use this button to add reviews to the email. You can see the little green notification on the right telling us that the review comments have been added. Now, the comments aren't immediately visible in this window, so you'll need to scroll down to the bottom to see the comments. And we can see reviewer A, remaining anonymous, saying that the article looks good. Remember, that came in from the reviewer comments we saw. Again, that would be more instructive for the authors in the real world, directing them to make some specific changes. As the section editor, we can also make changes to the text of this email before we send it. Review B was also included, saying to resubmit elsewhere. But because we're ignoring this one, let's just delete it before sending. If there were any files we wanted to share with the author, such as a marked up Word document, we could upload it here. But only if it was anonymous and didn't include the reviewer's name in the body of the document or in the properties of the file. Okay, now this looks good. So let's record our decision. So now a couple of things have happened. We can now see the status has changed to revisions have been requested, and an email has been sent out to the author, including the details of the requested revisions. So that's it for Tim for now. Let's transition over to see what the author sees. All right, so now we've switched over and we can see the view, the view of our author, Jalal. He's logged in, and we can see right away that revisions have been requested. He'd also received the email, so he knew this was the status of his submission. Let's click on the entry to see the full record. 
and we're now in the review stage. Again, we can see that revisions have been requested. There's the notification, which is simply a copy of the email that was sent out, and we can again see reviewer A's comments. If any attachments had been sent, those would also be available here. The revision section is where the author will upload his revised version. And if the author had any questions, he could create a discussion here with the editor. So, based on the reviewer comments, Jalal will go outside of OJS and make the requested changes in his Word document. And once that's done, he can upload the revised file here. It's a revision of a previous file, so let's choose that from the drop-down menu. Hit Upload, choose the revised file from his desktop, hit Continue. He won't need to make any changes here. We could add another file if we had one, but we're just working with a single file. And there it is, listed in the revision section. This is also now visible to the section editor. And let's add a new discussion here, letting Tim know that we've uploaded the revisions. We could add an attachment here, but don't need to now. Say OK. And it's now done, and Jalal can wait for a response from the section editor. So Tim has now received an email from the author informing him that the revisions are uploaded. So he can log in, return to his submission list, and see that the status has changed to revisions have been submitted. Here's the revised file. Clicking on it will download it for reading on our desktop. We can see the discussion created by Jalal, which is the same as the email we received. This all looks good. We read the revised document, we're happy with it, and we're ready to move on. Now if we weren't happy with it, we could reply to the discussion asking for further changes. Jalal would receive that message, he'd make the additional changes, he'd upload another revised file. In this way, the section editor and the author can carry on a conversation online, all the while it's being tracked within OJS. But for this example, let's say the revisions Jalal made were fine, and we're going to make our decision to accept his paper for publication. This brings up an email to notify him of this decision. We can revise the basic text that's provided by OJS. We can skip past adding the review comments, as he's already seen these and responded to them. From here, we can choose which files to move over to the copy editing stage. By default, OJS checks any files that were in the revision section, but you have the power to override that. Let's hit the button to record our decision. The author has now been notified that his work's been accepted and is moving on to copy editing. And you can see here in the editorial interface that we've moved from the review stage into the copy editing stage. In the next video, we'll go over the copy editing stage in more detail together. That's it for now, though. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.